What is going on guys? I am Consumer Tech Review and today we're gonna to be doing a review of one of the most beautiful keywords I think we've ever had on the channel. This is the Lawfrey 1%. If you wanna check it out, there are links below, but let's jump into the video, starting off with what's in the box. The packaging is awesome. When you open it up, it says to be the 1%. Monies, I like that. I think that's what that means, but probably is around more like the transparent stuff. But then you have a frosted plastic protector. I think that's just for the case. I don't, I mean, I guess you could probably make it usable for the actual keyboard, but then you get a manual and paperwork, the keyboard itself, and a standard black 90 degree USB type C cable. It's a nice cable, but it's nothing special. It's just rubber coated, it's your average cable. All right, but now before we move into the actual review process, I do wanna say Lawfree has sponsored this review, but they have only sponsored a place. So essentially they are paying us to review this, not paying us to review it a certain way. So all of these are all my own opinions and the entire review process is, well, up to me. I can say whatever I want, whether that's negative or positive. So shout out to them for helping support the channel, but let's review this right now, starting with the form factor and build quality. All right, so first off, this is a 65% form factor. That's a non-split design. So those arrow keys are right up against the rest of this. I think for this kind of design, it's pretty much perfect. I mean, it looks really, really nice and clean. Now, build quality here is superb. Now, again, obviously we have not gotten to the last section of the video, which is price and value, but this is a more expensive keyboard. Lawfree has always had very refined keyboards and that's no exception here. Now, the top part of the case is a very thick, clear, translucent piece of plastic on the top. It's thick, it has curved edges, it feels very high quality, but not just that, underneath that translucent piece, is mirrored plastic. So it's literally a mirror. Makes it look very, very cool. Makes it look icy, whitish, cleanish. It's super, super cool. Now on the bottom of the case, keeps with that design element and has a full mirrored piece of plastic on the bottom with the Law Free or Low Free logo in the middle there. This is really, really pretty. The overall design of this is they pretty much got it like perfect. Now there is one con, not really a con, but on the bottom part of the case, that mirror, it is an absolute fingerprint magnet, but that's kind of going to be any mirrored plastic or mirror in general. So it's not really a con and you're probably not gonna be picking this up a ton. However, you probably are gonna wanna hold the edges rather than the bottom. On the front of the case, there is also a screwed in kind of like a plaque that says transparent all the way. Uh, and that looks very cool. It looks premium. I like it. Overall, nice touch. Then on the right side, you also have some graphics that say 1% and some other stuff. And then on the back right side where the type C uh, port is, you also have it saying like USB type C. It just looks cool. It looks really clean and I like the design elements here. But continuing on with that, the plate is a white piece of solid metal. And in my mind, I was kind of like, should that have been mirrored or should that have been white? However, with the backlight on and the other mirrored parts, it makes this just look like the whole keyboard is glowing. We will get to the LEDs at some point because they are very cool. But I mean, this thing looks amazing. It's incredibly unique and very tasteful. Now moving on to the mounting style and the dampening. First off, this is tray mounted with standoffs. Yes, that, I mean, it's an expensive keyboard to be tray mounted. However, obviously the biggest thing that they're going for here is, well, the build and the build quality and everything going around that, which I think they absolutely achieve that. This isn't a massive con for me, but I know some people are like, I am not going to spend that amount of money if it's not gasket mounted. But talking about the dampening, I don't even know what's inside. Not really an issue because you'll see when we get to the sound and feel section of the video, but I was unable to get this open. There are four screws along the back, two screws in the front plaque, um, and then I think you pop off the clear plastic case, but honestly, it was too hard to pop off where I didn't wanna break this, and I probably was gonna end up either scratching it uh, or cracking something, something like that. This is not really a case that's made to be opened up. Possibly in one of the other versions of this, uh, it might be easier to get into, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit because that's kind of a con, kind of not a con. All right, the keycaps. These are, well, probably some of the most unique keycaps. That's kind of the theme here. It's very unique. Firstly, these are obviously totally clear and clear keycaps have actually popped up like everywhere. A lot of different custom keyboard or custom keycap companies have now made clear keycaps. In fact, my daily driver actually has uh, Echo's clear keycaps on here, but these are even more unique because they are hollow inside. So typically you have a stem that goes up basically to the keycap right here, which is actually what your finger touches and basically the stem that connects to the stem of the switch is right here. Well on these, the keycap goes like this, it then has a bottom plate and the stem comes out from the bottom plate and you can pop these open 
and put resin inside, sand, dirt, glue. You can pretty much do whatever you want inside of the keycaps and then pop them closed again. Uh, and so a lot of people have modded these and you can mod them and do whatever you want. That is a really cool thing to have on a keyboard like this. Now, due to the design, you don't really realize, but these are really tall keycaps. Now, when you look at them, you look like those are normal-ish keycaps. They actually look very similar to uh, Akko's ASA profile. They kind of have that dipped uh, dish design, not similar to Cherry profile or something like that, but more similar to like Akko's ASA profile, like I said, but they don't look like especially tall keycaps. However, because the stem actually protrudes like beyond the bottom of the keycap, these are really, really tall. And when you compare them to like SA profile, which is a very tall keycap, uh, these in some places are taller than SA profile, which is, well, that's crazy because SA profile is really big. Now, one of the most interesting things with the keycaps that kind of still blows my mind is that a lot of keycaps will affect the sound of a keyboard substantially. Um, a lot of times more than you think especially when jumping up from budget to mid-grade to high-end keycaps. These are kind of unlike any keycap as far as their acoustics. Um, I put a lot of high-end keycaps on here, a uh, Cherry Profile, SA, different profiles, and the sound honestly was not very good. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but for the price point, you would expect better. However, with the stock keycaps, this thing sounds like really good, um, surprisingly good you open this out of the box and you're like, okay, it looks amazing. It looks like it's maybe not gonna sound the best because it looks like they prioritized just the look of this keyboard, the design of it, and how are clear keycaps with all these different gimmicks going to sound good and they sound like surprisingly good. The main key difference here is when you put on something like Cherry Profile keycaps or other keycaps, SA Profile, ASA Profile, the sound wasn't refined. It was a little bit, I wouldn't say, well, kind of a scratchy sound, a more tinny sound. Um, something that you hear from a mid-grade keyboard, but not a high-end keyboard. When these keycaps are on there, it completely removes that. I don't know if that's because the sound like just like moves around inside of the hollow keycap. I don't know. It's really weird. It makes for a not a soft keyboard, not a super loud keyboard, but right there in the middle, it's 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 definitely a louder sound, but not crazy loud. Um, but it's soft and muted at the same time. Uh, it's really good. I really like these. However, it is not all good. There are a few cons that you may have to weigh for yourself. Printing is significantly harder on clear keycaps and that's very apparent here. The edges where the font is consistent. So the fonts are consistent uh, as far as like laterally, they don't lean over like a lot of uh, cheaper printing will kind of lean over sometimes. I don't think this is cheaper printing. I just think it's very hard to get a clean print on a clear keycap. These, you can see that even though the edges and everything are straight, the printing is jagged. Some places, if you look closely, it's like that didn't quite adhere perfectly, maybe didn't dry well. I don't really know. However, it's not perfect. And then the other inconsistency is the placement. Now again, not this way, right? It's not like, oh, the G is this way and the H is this way, but you do have like the centering is not quite that good on the keycaps. It's very apparent between the G and the H, as you can see in this B-roll clip, that's, well, substantially off. But that's enough with that. Let's move on to switches, hot swap ability, and hot swap direction. Now for the switches, these are using Kale Box Jellyfish switches. These switches are completely transparent. Uh, the overall housing and everything is completely transparent and clear, so it matches the board basically perfectly, which is great, especially for the LED lighting. Now these are factory lube and they're a pretty good linear. Uh, however, they are a little bit scratchy, uh, more scratchy than I would like. Although with the factory lubing, it was actually not bad. Like I think the factory lubing was not terrible. Uh, they do feel fairly consistent across the board. However, the biggest con of these switches is there is well, stem wobble, like more stem wobble than I would have expected for switches that cost this much. Now, I don't think this would have been as big of an issue, but again, like I said, those keycaps are very tall and this kind of accentuates that there's wobble. So when you do move your, like if you put your fingers on the keycaps and move them side to side, like there's some wobble there. 
a substantial amount of wobble. Now, personally, this would not be a deal breaker for me, but I know some people literally cannot stand that. It's obviously not my favorite thing in the world, but form over function, with this one, I'm gonna go with form. Now, for hot swap ability on this specific version, the totally clear, transparent one, this is not hot swappable. These are soldered in. Now, if you're getting this, you wanna go with that 100% clear, clear, clear mirrored look. I'm not too mad about it. The switches are a good fit. Uh, with those paired with the keycaps, they sound like the board sounds and feels really good. So I'm not really mad that it is soldered on. This is not a keyboard, not a keyboard for extreme modders, unless you're talking about modding those keycaps. This is not gonna be one that you're gonna go in and like do all this stuff. This is buying a really cool, unique keyboard out of the box. There is a version, I think it's called the Misty version. It's not like all the transparent stuff, but it's basically the same keyboard that is fully hot swappable. So if you are a modder and you do like this form, but you wanna be able to mod it, that's probably the one to go for. And then there's also another colorway that is called Orange Soda, and it's kind of a soda theme. So if you like that, there's also that one. All right, now let's talk stabilizers. They did this actually fairly well. Now the stabs are plate mounted. This is a little bit disappointing because at this price point, I would have liked to see screw in stabilizers, but again, this is not a modding keyboard, so it's not a big deal. And that's a good thing because factory tune is quite good. These sit really tight in the board, not quite as tight as what well, we just reviewed the Cooler Master CK720, I think that was it. Uh, those were maybe the tightest stock plate mounted stabilizers that I have ever used. These are like one notch down from that. They're still incredibly good. They're very tight. They kind of have a, a white cloudy look to them. They look really good. The stock factory tune is very good though. Um, all the stabilizers feel and sound really nice. The only thing is that the spacebar had a slight tick on the right side. When you tap it in a specific spot on the right side, it has a slight tick. Um, but besides that, these things were pretty dang good. All right, typing sound and feel, this is important because again, a lot of this is what you're gonna keep stock. Now this is actually really interesting here. On a scale from quietest to loudest and right there in the middle, this one is just over here. So it's just kind of leaning towards being louder, but it's not annoying. It's a refined louder. This doesn't have crazy volume levels, but if you're in an open office and not a closed space, uh, probably not great for a open office. Now, like I said before, the sound is a soft sound. It's definitely louder, but it's soft. That's exactly like my thing in a keyboard. I don't really like quieter Keychron stock, Keychron sounding keyboards that are just really over dampened. And even when pulling a lot of the dampening out, uh, it just never sounds that good on the higher pitch side of it. This is definitely not that. This has the lower pitch. The keycaps do an unbelievably good job um, kind of modifying that sound way more than I ever would have expected. And honestly, this could be game changing if other companies pick up this design of hollow keycaps. Or an even better thing, if Lowfree would sell these keycaps as custom keycap sets, like for anyone to use, that would be awesome. Now the sound feels like the case is very dense, but it's not overly dampened inside the case, uh, but it doesn't sound like a hollow case either. This just feels well built. And for what it is, the keyboard is unique, it's beautiful, and it sounds really good. If you do swap those keycaps out, it doesn't have quite as unique of a sound or quite as that soft, refined sound. Now for feel, this is solid. Um, like when you tap on it, it's nice and solid. It's not bouncy. This is not gasket mounted. It's tray mounted. So don't expect that here. The keycaps are glossy. So they are a little bit more grippy than you may be used to. Now, again, like I said, I use glossy keycaps every day um, as my daily driver and my editing desk, honestly, just because I love RGB. But if you're not used to it, if you're more used to ABS or PBT style keycaps that kind of, well, they're, they're just kind of smooth. You can just I don't know. The glossy does kind of pull your fingers a little bit more. So if you are a typist, this may not be the absolute best thing. But again, if you use this for a day or two, you're gonna get used to it. But some people really do not like feeling gloss on their fingertips. I personally don't mind it. Now RGB, we're gonna talk about it. This is actually not RGB, it's LED because the LEDs are white only. And you might think, oh my God, you're paying that much for a keyboard and you only get white? Well, it's not really 
the same here. So RGB would combine, usually, typically would combine different colors to create kind of a white, which is not a true white. These are true white LEDs, which means the light is not only very accurate to, I would say probably 5,500 Kelvins, although I don't know specifically, but that's what it looks like, but it's extremely bright. And there's different brightness levels, so you can turn it down if it's too bright, but this thing looks absolutely stunning. It looks like ice cubes, it looks like water, it's just beautiful with the RGB on. Also, as well as that, the space bar has five RGBs, one in the switch and then two on either side of that space bar with a like diffuser, which is really cool. That's the first time I've ever seen a diffuser in extra RGBs on that space bar. Fantastic. As for the different modes, it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect from any modern keyboard. You have the statics, you have reactive colors, you have like wave, whatever you want, or not reactive colors, but reactive like lighting from like typing. Pretty much exactly what you would expect here. But let's move on to battery and connectivity. All right, so this is wireless with a 2000 milliamp hour battery. Now, I would have liked to see a little bit of a bigger battery, maybe 3000 or 4000 milliamp. That is because things like the RK84, the Royal Clutch RK84 do have like a, I think that one has a 4000 milliamp hour battery and it's around 80, 90 bucks. So this one is substantially more than that. Although granted the switches are significantly way more expensive and the rest of the build quality is as well. However, that's a small nitpicky thing. Battery life overall has been very good. Lafrey is claiming 60 hours of battery life. I doubt that happening with full RGB on because that RGB is super bright. I don't know exactly how much power that draws, but it's gotta be, I mean, that's very bright. I don't know though, but overall for us, the battery life, we didn't specifically measure it, but it has not been at all a con. So that's good. Now for connectivity, this uses Bluetooth. You can be connected to three devices at one time and switch between them, pretty standard. And you can also plug this in with a USB type C. You can do a wired mode or you can just use it for charging. Now as well, there is a Mac and Windows switch and the keycaps actually come like standard with both a Windows and a Mac like command keys printed on the keycaps, which is actually a really cool way of doing it. So you can switch between Mac, Windows, Android, iOS um, on the bottom side, as well as your on off and Bluetooth switches, which is very cool. The only thing is I wish those would have been on the left or the right side so that you wouldn't have to pick this up to turn this on or off or to switch between Mac and Windows. That again comes from the bottom being kind of a fingerprint magnet, but those are small nitpicking things. Okay, but price and value. The most important section of the video where we figure out, is this worth it for you? Is this the right keyboard and should you buy it? Now coming in at $219, that is a lot of money for a keyboard, but what are you getting here? Well, you're getting switches that I think are pretty good. The Basically the biggest thing here is that they're a good linear. They do have some stem wobble, but that RGB, that's the point of them, they're totally clear. But then the keycaps and the case is very, very unique. There was a ton of research and development and probably a ton of money spent on that for the keycaps because you can literally pop them open, but they're not like, they they are not cheap feeling at all. And then you pair the build quality of the case, which is literally amazing. You pair all that together and you're getting a keyboard that I think is worth it if you're the right person buying this. This is not like a Keychron keyboard or an Echo keyboard that's pretty easy to recommend to 95% of people. Like you're not gonna be angry if I recommend you a K8 or an ACO 3068B, you're probably going to like it, regardless of really who you are. This keyboard is definitely more specific, but if you look at this thing and you're like, that's beautiful, I like the way it sounds, I mean, that's really what you're paying for. A unique sound, a unique feel, incredibly unique keycaps, and a beautiful overall board. So do I think it's worth it? Yeah, absolutely I do. Absolutely if this is your cup of tea, but for me, I drink my tea clear, no sugar, and a little thock. All right, again, if you wanna check this out, there are links below. These keywords are always so interesting to recommend. I obviously do not recommend this to everyone, but if you have the money, number one, because $219 is a lot, but I don't think it's overly expensive at all for the keycaps, the build quality. And you do, I mean, these are expensive switches in this keyboard, but you gotta be the right person. If you love clear, uh, beautiful white RGB, I mean, Oh, this would look unbelievable on an all white setup or an all black setup. That would be cool. All right, this was Consumer Tech Review. This keyboard is awesome. I'm absolutely going to be using this. Maybe switching it out on my daily setup. I would really like tactiles, but ah, oh, this is a very beautiful keyboard. All right, 
This is Consumer Diary, and I'll see you guys in the next video.